Hi everyone, um, we are going to be discussing plants and um, we kind of skipped an important chapter about plant anatomy which we may go back to and so I might review some terms that weren't directly in this chapter but um, are relevant to the material. Okay, first question, how do plants get the materials that they need to produce food and to survive? Um, mainly they acquire their nutrients from air, water, and soil. And so from the air, the most important thing that they um, incorporate into their system is CO2. Um, and remember, they use CO2 for the process of photosynthesis in order to make organic material and also to make glucose for them to survive. Um, from the soil, that's the main area where they obtain water and minerals and oxygen. Um, the water that they, they use during photosynthesis, remember they split the water molecule to get the electrons they need in order to make ATP and NADPH. And O2 is used during cellular respiration. And remember, that's the final electron uh, receptor and it receives the electrons um, when it goes through the electron transport chain to be able to produce a lot of ATP. So plants are definitely dependent on its environment, on their environment. Um, there are different kinds of tissues that the plant uses to uh, transport materials down from the roots up to the leaves. Um, one of them is called xylem. Xylem is a tissue that transports water and minerals up from the roots to the, to the tops of the leaves. Phloem is this part right here. So xylem is this bluish area and phloem kind of surrounds the xylem. Phloem um, transports the sugars and food and nutrients. Um, from leaves and to the other parts of the plant. So it kind of, xylem kind of flows up and then phloem kind of goes from the leaf area where photosynthesis happens and transports it to different parts of the uh, plant. Um, the way I like to remember it, phloem starts with like a F sound, so it sounds like food. So phloem transports like the sugars or the food. Xylem transports water. Um, and then the other important structure is root hairs. And root hairs are all these little extensions that um, occur on the root itself. And what it does is it increases the surface area of the root or the epidermal surface area. Epidermal just means like the skin of the root um, to help absorb more nutrients. So um, you might wonder how does xylem and phloem decide on like what to allow enter into its cells? How could it be so selective? Um, remember that all cells have selectively permeable membranes and so um, xylem has certain membranes that will specifically take in a lot of water and certain kind of nutrients that it, uh, the plant needs from the roots. Uh, phloem concentrates on food. Um, so those are two important, that's an important structure going all the way back from first semester. Um, there are two different routes that um, nutrients can take to get to the xylem from the roots to the xylem so that it can go transport up. Uh, one of them is the extracellular root. And so this is where um, things enter into the root hair but don't actually flow inside any of the cells. They kind of are able to avoid them by going between the cells, through the cell wall, between the cell walls. Um, and so this process is very non-selective. Pretty much anything can go in between the cells. Um, but what happens is there's um, this special strip of cells called the Casparian strip. And in between these um, these cells, there are these like little waxy, like almost like blockades or barriers, and it prevents water and solutes, all the things that we're traveling, to enter into the xylem cells. And so, because it blocks anything from entering, um, these materials have to now enter into these these cells right here. And when they enter into these cells, now they're going to be regulated by the selectively permeable membranes. And so, because of this. Um, Pretty much all materials, even if they travel through an extracellular route between cells, eventually will have to enter into a cell and be regulated. The other possibility is for, from the very beginning, this blue route shows um, to enter into an intracellular route, and this is where you travel via the interiors of the cells. Um, and so you have to pass through all, the materials have to pass through all the different um, selectively permeable membranes. And uh, to travel from cell to cell, remember there's plasmodesmata, which are those little holes um, that allow solutes and materials to transport, uh, be transferred between cells. Okay, so what is the force that drives all the water to flow up the, the xylem up to the leaves? Um, it's a process called transpiration, and transpiration um, describes this process of water moving from roots to leaves, and it happens mainly through the process of evaporation. So remember, leaves have those holes on the bottom of them called stomata, and all these sto uh, stomata, um, they open and allow water to evaporate. 
And so because of water is evaporating, you could kind of think it think of this process as like a section where um, water is leaving the leaves and so because of that it's kind of pulls up all the water from the roots and there's like this uh, pressure for it to 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 fill up the places where the water is evaporating um, and as it and as this pressure is helping it to move up there are two interplaying forces that help the water to to go against gravity and those two are cohesion and adhesion um, different properties of the hydrogen bonding of water um, remember, cohesion is the likelihood of water to stick to itself, and adhesion is um, the desire for water to stick to other surfaces like the cell wall. And so there's this long chain of hydrogen bonds, um, cohesion where it's sticking to each other, and then adhesion when it's sticking to the cell walls, that helps the water to create this chain that will move up to replenish the waters that's lost through evaporation. And ultimately, this affects uh, the roots, so this process all the way down to the roots um, is one of the reasons why water is so likely to be soaked up and absorbed by the root system. All right, thank you guys so much for watching, and we will continue this discussion later in class. Bye.